These videos are a stream recording hybrid. Random commentary based on the stream chat may be found. Stupid gifs found from the stream chat will also be found. Viewer discretion may be advised. I came in like fuck you. Hey York, you were rocking it large up there. Was I? I haven't been on stage like that since elementary school. You made me think, man, like, things can't go on like this. We need, like, some action or something. I was pretty psyched up, you know, before you got on stage. I was like, dude, a real psycho in town. Pretty sweet gig. But now, I mean, dude, that lunatic could be any one of us, man. I don't want to think of that whack job coming after my family. Makes me shudder all over, man. It was way too heavy. You'll catch him, right, FBI? Of course. But you need to be able to take care of those you love, too. You're right, man. Right on the level. I need to do what's right for my family, man. You lit my soul, man. Thanks, FBI. Okay, Keith. Well, guys, welcome back to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. So, in the last episode, uh... We finished up a little stuff at the hospital? I don't remember. We, we did stuff at the... We did stuff here. I know we did a speech here, and I talked to people, and the game decided to auto-shoot me to some person, and then because I was doing stuff with the chat just a minute ago, oh my god, what is that? Uh, I'm gonna have to remember to put that on screen right now, because that's really disturbing, Ryan. Uh... <laughs> I the chat wanted to put new emotes for it and so that people could emote anything they wanted to and just oh god is that three is that five pizzas at once oh god this is disturbing <laughs> hey Lily agent York your speech frightened some of us a little you should work on being more sensitive with words when talking to groups really I tried my best to be gentle. So, have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Hmm. Just Becky, really. She works part-time at the store. She's been acting strange recently. Strange? How? I took the boys along to visit her house today. I was just worried, you know, because she hasn't come into work at all after that incident. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Alright. Well, Becky apparently has more secrets that she doesn't want to talk about that we will force out of her one way or another. But we do need to talk to Mr. General Guy who has my car at the impound. I heard it was wrecked the last time. And apparently this guy's actually so a reference to another game right. made by Swery. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the general. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore, not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happen in this town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> You kids today don't even know how to ask for something, right? Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. He literally exudes raw power, Zack. Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? I did not notice it was a sergeant's uniform, as I'm not a military expert. I do need to speak to these people, because I've never met them before. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia. Nick's wife?
Anna worked at your husband's diner, right? What kind of girl was she? Well, she was a very hard worker. A nice girl. Did you ever see her acting strange? Well, not really. But there was one thing. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained. And came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. A criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. Sorry for the delay there. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I presume you are the owner of the diner that Anna worked at? That's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. You sure? I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. All right, well, Nick's kind of, well, yeah. He's an interesting folk. I've spoken to everyone in this room, I think. Let's see, was there someone in the corner? Oh, hey, it's Miss Old Lady Chan. Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested, but I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but... I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... No, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. Well, she's fast. Zach, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zach. Amazing. Wow. Okay. How about this person? Oh my. My pot is getting cold. Um, the pot lady. Hey, mister! My pot is getting cold! You are... who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney! Sigourney, okay. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. Zach, we've met all sorts today, but really, she takes the cake. Amazing. Sigourney is an odd one. 
Um, let's try talking to Jim. He's a nice old man. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. I guess I reek of the material world, don't I? I have to, in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack. Well, he was unhelpful as always. Gina, how about you? You gonna give me another lap dance? Hello again, Agent York. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good today. Well, that's good to hear. Do you have any information that could help me out? Information? Sounds difficult and not my kind of conversation. Anyways, you should come by the gas stand again. I'll give you the best service in town. The only Zach, service? Perhaps you can tell me. Why did she bother coming here? She wanted to see you, and now let's talk to Jack. I've nothing to say to you. If he spits on my shoes. I haven't asked you anything yet, Jack. Shut it! I might open up if you introduce me to, I don't know, a Ben Franklin or two. <laughs> oh, what a creature. Guess there's always someone like him in every town. God, he sucks. Alright. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but Benjamin Franklin's been dead for many years. So I don't think I'm going to be introducing you to anything but his picture. Time to talk to people in here. Now, what I was originally trying to do was access this. Because I like my coffee black just... I like my coffee black just like my metal. Now, Emily, you in your cat suit, which we may have to change soon since it's been like six chapters since we put you in that. Oh, Agent five York, chapters? Are you finished oh. asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. Oh, thank you, Emily. Dinner sounds great right about now. I already spoke to Thomas. George, do you have anything to say about this? Agent Morgan, here's your chance to get to know some of the townsfolk. Don't let it go to waste. Well, I already knew most of them, other than, like, five of them. All vegetables, the lot of you. Alright. Let's head out to this exit. See if there's anywhere to go around here. Is there no one left? Uh, Ryan, I already spoke to Quentin. He was one of the first people I spoke to. Uh, Quint, not Quentin. Ah, whatever his name is. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. Who are... I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith. Your eyes look dead. Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. Um, I hate to tell you this, I have an infinite ammo one of these, I have full on the ammo for this, I don't need flares because I have like three, and I have enough lollipops. Bye, you are completely useless. You've got quite a selection here, no wonder people come from all around. <laughs> 
Even today, a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. Oh my. The shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. See you then. It is quite weird. What the? Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. Was that the 1700 clock? seem to be making a lot of progress in this game at this point. Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report, too. Okay, then let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All right, then, let's do that. Uh, hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's Diner. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greenvale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? I think it'd be great. I'm really okay, let's hungry. go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Or go directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am quite hungry, so this is just going to make me even more hungry. After this episode, I'm probably going to take a little bit of a break and grab some food out from the kitchen. I've been sheriff here for a long time now, and this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases. But just the regular stuff. A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life. Okay. To eat from or as a urine cup. Huh. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. Then he'd down it in one gulp. For him, that was a holy ritual. Is he getting scruffier the as the thing goes on? state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls. Well, that is one thing. But those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> uh, not sanitary. Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. That was a nasty one. Thank you, Agent York. 
Now, let's talk about something else. You don't want to hear any more? That's a shame, isn't it, Zack? I was just about to get to the good part, too. It sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a, a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So fundamentally, there is no difference in size. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course, but still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me, neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner, waiting on tables. <laughs> Is that Quint in the background? <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then. Episode 1, Chapter 7, Dinner. Well, actually, now that I think about it, haha, I filled up my food. Lucky me. Seriously, though, I swear, I, I like shaved like last night or something, or yesterday, and suddenly during that cutscene, I started getting scruffier and scruffier. It's like. The scruff overpowered everything. Wait, wait just a second. Where am I going? Apparently I need to go to the hotel? The scruff is too powerful. It's too OP for me. Alright, I think I'm going to use this radio. And wait, did I pass it? Yeah, it's right there at the top. The hotel. All right, let's head inside. Why am I working in the hotel room? I thought I had my own home. Okay then, Zack. Let's go back over our progress. First the victim, Anna's death. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. That was the direct cause of death. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off, and I found something inside her mouth. Do you remember what that was, Zack? A red seed, I believe. That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emily, it was raining when Anna was killed. 
but traces of tears were still evident on her face. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill, and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime. A total of four things. Knee prints in the grass. A wood chip with metal dust. A photo of a man with a tattoo on his back and... One other thing. Do you remember what that was, Zach? Oh, do I? Seriously, do I? Uh, yeah. A broken stiletto heel. That's right. A broken stiletto heel. Aligning this with the other evidence suggests that two people came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Those being the perpetrator who killed Anna and Miss Stiletto Heel. There is also the possibility that a third party carried Anna to the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Two or three people. In any case, Miss Stiletto Heel may have vital information. We need to find her next. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. <sighs> have I forgotten anything? Ah, of course. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Do you remember that, Zack? What do you think she was holding on to? A round object. That's right. A round object. Probably the, the reverse on her piece hand of suggest a piece mark. The man in the photo found in the woods had a tattoo of an upside down piece mark on his back. These two could well be related. But we don't know for sure. Next, the town folk. A few are worthy of special attention. Carol McLean, the singer and bar owner. She's Thomas's sister. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Both of them seem to be hiding something. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who is out of town. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. Enjoying food is cultural, and yet it's also a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. Oh, and on Emily's back... It was strange to me. Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zach. I wasn't getting all excited or anything. But it did make me feel strange. Nostalgic and sad, almost. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. Is the game supposed to be doing this? Ryan, please don't tell me the game just froze again. Okay, thank you. I would have been quite upset if that had happened a seventh time? Sixth time? Something like that. So it looks like the 
art curators there. Red plant. Because you know, those are wonderful things to have. Are we at the end of the first episode? Clear dinner. And now here we are. Episode 1 cleared. So guys, next time on Let's Play Deadly Premonition, we're going to be going in. We're going to be hopefully starting up episode 2 with no issues and definitely no murders in this town. Hopefully. I'm saying hopefully because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> See you guys next time.